Hello everyone, hope you're all right. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for those who have already put stuff in the comments. I'll come to them in a minute. Hope everyone's had a good week so far out on the glass. I had a good week really. It's been really busy, which was good for me, but we've got through it all right. Bit of a mad day on Friday. I felt it by Friday, what the week's been like as well. Another sign I'm getting older, eh? We've got through that. Weather's been good and hopefully more of it next week. I've been like thinking, what shall I do for today's lot? And then I thought, I why not do behind the scenes of your typical day for a window cleaner? That's something I thought I should go to. I'll go to the comments first anyways, just welcome people in. So pro clean, you right, Paul? Cheers, mate. The window washer, he's saying, evening guys, just come upstairs for some peace. Enjoy the Formula One. Didn't even know it was on, to be honest. And then Mills cleaning, you all right, mate? Thanks for saying hello. I hope everyone's all right. What's your average day, typical day of window cleaning? Some days just out the blue, different, aren't they, and change. It breaks down it being boring, of every day being the same. But it is different. I know you're doing the same thing, window cleaning, but you're round. I'm going to different areas, seeing different people. I have quite a few customers that come out and have a bit of a chat. I don't mind a chat. It's part of the job, really. So your typical day. It's just what I say to the kids. There's a start, there's a finish, and there's stuff that happens in the middle. You can't plan it, can you? For like your typical days, for me, we break them down. I've either got your normal window cleaning day, which is just a day of normal maintenance cleans, or with your first cleans thrown in. And then what we do is we have something called a gutter day. When the gutter jobs start to come in, we stack them up until we can squeeze them into one whole day. And what I do is I go on to squeegee and I just shift my whole schedule across a day. And in that blank day we've made free, that's where we load up all the gutter jobs. With me van, I empty out all the stuff I have so Sophie, the third person, can window clean. We get rid of the barrels of water and the 45 litre trolley, put in the gutter clearing kit. An industrial 85, gutter vacuum, the generator from Skyvac that powers it, that takes up a lot of space. Then I've obviously got all the poles, the leap poles, the hose, and all the stuff that comes with a gutter vac. And also put in my builder's buckets, ladder mate. Pro gutter tools, all the stuff that I used to have when I did everything from the ladder, because you still need a ladder even though you've got a gutter vac. Sometimes it's even quicker for certain bits of the job. Yeah, all my gutter vac stuff's in there and the camera and a pole for the camera. Because I can't afford to keep going home, unloading, reloading the van. We, that's why we have a gutter day. But the, gut, the van set up for gutter clears and we do them all in that day. If we've got jobs where it's face yourselves and gutters, that's what we throw in on a gutter day as well. Some jobs we do, it's a gutter clear as well as face your softs and gutters. And other days, it's just a gutter clear or face your softs and gutters only. So that's what we tend to do. Normal window cleaning day and a gutter day. And then the other day that I have is like it was for me today, turn around kit day. That's where I pull everything out of the van, wash the inside of the van through, wash it all the way out, outside the van, hoover the front. I clear up all the kit and equipment check it all over if it needs cleaning or me uh, rinse bars need pulling through so that they operate better so that's basically the three types of typical days that i have there is no real day that's the same for me if you've got a lot of work booked in a day it's a bit of an adrenaline kick because you know you're pushed for time to get it all in and complete when you have little road works that get in the way and it's putting you behind time you're a bit under the pressure for anything that slows you down so you're always chasing and then it's nice to finish the day by five o'clock at home. And you think, phew, got through that. If a customer comes out to chat, I'll take that time to chat with them as well. Obviously, hopefully not too long because it's part of the job, isn't it? Some of the people you clean, they like a chat and they need it. And it goes a long way. You get other jobs. So it all helps. That's why I don't like it when customers say, can you give me a time? I say the only time I can guarantee is eight o'clock in the morning because that's for us where we start. The first clean of the day, we're outside their house for eight o'clock in the morning. Well, that's what we aim for and we finish when we finish and everything is in between. Some customers, when I ask for a time, they're not asking a, a precise time. They just want to know if you're in the morning or in the afternoon because something's come up and they want to know when you're going to be there. Some people like to be there, even though you say you don't have to be in when I come around to clean. Some people like to physically be there to say hello and pay you as well. So every customer is different, aren't they? But that for me, that's a typical window cleaning day. I run out of water, so to make it more fun, I've got to find time to get home, refill with water and go back out. 
That's why I tend to go home now for lunches because we're going to refill anyway. It all adds to the fun, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm trying to squeeze everything in by 5 p.m. Some days it's early, some days it's later, but it is what it is. As long as I complete the day's work, I'm happy. In a typical day, you're going to get the odd skip here or there, and some of them come up on the day. For example, a build is turned up or someone's turned up to put the scaffolding up on a completely different day to what was agreed. And that's a typical day for me. And if it's a gutter day, same thing. We start at eight o'clock on the first house. You never know how long these gutter days are really going to go. So we don't know how much work to load onto it. My wife, Teresa, does that. She's normally spot on. If you felt like you could have squeezed in an extra job, then you take the hit of an early day. That's what we tend to do on our gutter days. We try and load the work in there so it's equal to what we'd turn over on a window cleaning day. Preferably, you want it to be more than otherwise it's not worth doing but these gutter jobs come round people will want them done once a year I like doing them anyway and uh, it's just what it is isn't it and you never know these gutter jobs how long they're gonna go sometimes you, you think oh we're flying here we're gonna make good time then you'll hit a tricky bit and then you've lost all that and then you're behind time then you make it up then you finish on the time you thought it would take for example so that's what pushes me anyway I've always got one eye on the job one eye on the clock and it's the way it is but that's what we do. I just wondered what your typical days were. Just stick them in the comments below. I'll, I'll come to them in a sec. It's not really that boring, is it? When you're thinking about and you're dealing with traffic and everything else, you're trying to dodge some of the cleans where they're near school areas so you know not to go there on the school run. So you try and avoid that and go in the quieter time. You learn all this as you go, don't you? It's tweak your day that much. And when you're busy working, and you're behind time, then you get people walking up asking for a quote and you're like, oh no, what do I do? So you go for it because you don't want to lose that opportunity as well. So it's all fun and games, isn't it? Like Friday, last Friday, it just went done for us. That was a gutter day. First customer, we did a conservatory roof clean. No answer on the door. Tried a few times. While we doing that, got the ladders out. We got access to the back that way and on cleaned the conservatory roof. But while I was doing that, we noticed a dog in the garden. It wasn't the customer's dog. I could hear someone calling a dog. I said to my son Matthew, ask that bloke in the garden behind if they've got a white dog. So my son asked that. The guy said, yeah, why? And we're like, I think your dog's in this garden. He was saying, I'll come all the way around, which would have been a long walk through the layout of the roads. I was saying to him, I wouldn't bother. We've tried knocking on the door. I don't think anyone's in. And the gates are all locked. So there's a bit of a conundrum going on. Then I like, just said, would your dog be all right if I picked him up? He said, yeah, should do. So we spent about 10 minutes getting the dog eventually I managed to pick the dog up and hand them over to the owner across the fence who was obviously well chuffed and then they're offering you like a bacon butt in a cup of tea but I said I was all right and it's fine and it was no problem it's just another one of them typical days you get as a window cleaner where you help people out you've got an elderly customer and they're struggling something heavy so you say I'll move it because there's me my son and my daughter so there's three of us tell us where you want it we'll move it no problems it makes you happy when you do something nice anyway there's no real typical day. It's just a flow or run a play that you try to go through, isn't it? So I'll just go through the comments here. Dawn window clean. I was talking about the gutters, saying always carry uh, gutter cares. It's small vac, so you can often do the gutter jobs on the hoof, which makes a, the variety. It'd be nice just to do all one day, but the job's coming gradually through the year. If you had a small gutter vac like what you've got, a smaller one that you can always keep in the van with a little generator, they're brilliant, aren't they? Because they're always there. And sometimes you could be doing a job and ask, could you quickly do me gutters? And that's handy just to whip out there and then and do. The amount of times that's happened to me and then I'm like, I can't because I haven't got me gutter stuff. So I'll have to book it for another day. And they're okay with that. But you think sometimes strike while the iron's hot. But then again, I've got my ladder. I always have my pro gutter tools anyway in the van. So if it's something small, I'll just get my ladder and do it. But if it's a bigger gutter job, I have to put it on a day. And that's the thing, I don't like it to be waiting too many weeks till we do it. And luckily for us, when they come in, they all come in around the same time. So we can load them up onto a day's worth and then, like I say, make a gutter day. And it's also not too far away from when they've asked. And we like to give them time because sometimes these jobs are a bit pricey, aren't they? So it gives them time to put that money to one side for you as well. Paul's PB Pro Cleans just saying, I save one day a week for one-off jobs. So that's your gutter clearing, conservative roofs, etc. Not that I always have enough for a full day each week. It's handy, isn't it? Because it stops things building up 
and it's keeping your customers happy because you're doing it in a short time frame as well because generally when they're asking they probably want it done as soon as if you haven't got a full day's worth but you're still happy doing that it's a nice way to end the week isn't it a bit earlier and you've got a bit of money in as well everyone does stuff differently you just do what works for you and your customers when people ask for a time i just say morning or afternoon keep it a bit vague can't be too precise i know we try and plan them out in blocks but anything can happen i'm sure there's times where you might have found your customer not in too good shape and had to help them call an ambulance or ask a neighbor or come around and give them a hand and of course these things crop up you, you drop everything just to help them out anything can happen we say typical day but every day could be different i couldn't tell you how my week of window cleaning is going to go i just look at tomorrow make sure i'm at the first one where i should be and then everything just goes one after another and just take it as it comes keep considering getting a big vacuum but they are too big to go in the van down alleys most of the places i get that are a bit tight i can still get me industrial 85 down because you can take it off the trolley and carry it but with a small one it's easier the only difference between a big vac and a small vac is more motors and more power if you need it but i don't have all three motors of mine turned on all the time normally i run it two so a small vacuum would be fine I think it's not necessarily going to make it quicker. If you need that extra power, you've got it. There's more capacity to hold debris and water, but it's going to be heavier. To move around a smaller one just means you've got to empty it more, doesn't it? And being smaller, it's not too heavy when you do go somewhere to empty it neither. So there's pros and cons with both, and I think a little one will get you by no problems. It's just the bigger one, I think maybe it could speed things up a little bit just by the fact that you've got more power, more capacity, so you're spending less time filling it, emptying it. But when they're full of water, these bigger ones, they're bloody heavy as well. When it's really wet, and I know there's going to be a lot of water in the gutters, I tend to work in sections around the house. When I get to a point, I'll empty the water, or take the head off to look inside. If there's a lot of water, I'll empty it out rather than letting it get too full. So there's pros and cons between a bigger vacuum and a small one. If the one you've got's doing the job, I'd probably say stick with that. It's very handy, the smaller one. You can keep it in your van. Whereas for me, I can't keep my big setup and the big generator in there all the time. It can be hard to lift. Well, I don't lift, it's the generators on wheels, but I push up some ramps in and out my van. And when you're on shingle, your foot's a bit loose, footing. But at least with working with my son and my daughter, it's, it's easy to get the kit in and out. It's a lot of money to buy a big gutter vac. To then find out maybe it's not that much more of an advantage compared to the one you've got. Trusted Cleans Limited. What are you doing if customers keep cancelling jobs because it's raining, not being at home at a specific time, not having money and always some excuses? Now, a lot of people probably aren't here for this one. I'm probably the wrong person, to be honest, because I'm a bit of a softie. So I, I just put up with it unless they're serial skippers. If you're getting other offers of work, why should you turn them down to keep someone that's letting you down with all these skips? In that case, I would politely swap your customers and take a chance on the new one. There might be someone that pays you every time you go around and then your life's going to be easier. At the end of the day, you want an easier life. Probably by that point, you've had that customer for quite a long time. It's a bit hard, isn't it? If you're cleaning family members, you lose one customer, word's going to spread. You could lose a lot in one go. When you're in the village, you're worried about what people say. So it's not as easy as black and white. If they're serial skippers, I would put them on the list. Some people do their traffic light list, red, amber, green. Red are the ones that are always giving you a bit of a, a problem. Amber, not too bad. Green are keepers for definite. You can just highlight certain ones. If the opportunity arises, swap your customers around. That's what I would do. Because at the end of the day, you've got to do what you need to do to put food on the table for your family. We found some people who were skipping every other clean because they're down for every four weeks. Theresa, my wife's good at picking these up and she'll just say to me, shall we send them a message and ask them would they like to go every eight weeks because we've every other clean they're skipping. And that's sometimes worked. Sometimes your customers are just too polite to say something or not confident, they're a bit nervous. So you try and take it all into account. But you've got to do what you've got to do to feed your family. Uh, Dawn Window Cleaning's got a job last week. Then another three neighbours appeared, so they didn't have to clean between jobs, just walk the gear around the close. That's nice when that works. So I take it you was cleaning one house and then the three customers came out. 
So you felt obliged that while I'm here, I'll do the next house. It's nice when it's like that because the time it took to do all that and everyone's well chuffed. That's one of the things I've noticed when you're using a gut vac with a generator. It attracts a lot of attention. People start to look out and think, what's that? And then they see, if they've never seen a gut vac before, they're impressed by it, aren't they? So I think it gets you some um, jobs that way. Sometimes it's easier to do it there because if you've got the time, it saves a problem in the future where you're going to have to come and do that because when you book them in for another time, a lot of other things can be coming up in between. The window washers, I pass any extra jobs to a local fascia, guttering and external cleaning. They don't do the window cleaning, so it works well for both parties. They pass the window cleaning bits to you. So I suppose you can work together if he does some jobs where he's cleaning the exterior. He'll then speak to you and you turn up to clean the windows after he's done or a couple of days later. And that's handy as well, isn't it? Because sometimes that customer will also turn around and take you on as a regular window cleaner. You never know what one job leads to, do you? Because when they pass you through family members, trusted friends, and you get some really good customers that way as well. Paul's just saying, Trusted Cleans Limited, if someone's messing me around, I just let them go. If they get back in touch, I explain the reason. Had it recently and she apologised and has been a great customer ever since. There you go. So always be polite. It is a nervous thing to do. And I think sometimes it's nervous for your customer to come and speak to you as well. So just meet in the middle. The window washer saying domestic window cleaning where I'm in and out is the best case scenario for me. In and out, yeah. You're getting your work done quickly and obviously you're going to get a high turnover that way, aren't you? Trusted Cleans Limited. Guys, how much do you charge for commercial gutter cleaning? Good question. I just charge the same, to be honest, for commercial as I do for residential. I price per meter, that's why I do it. I know other people price per side, but where I live, I'm quite rural and all the houses are different sizes and some houses are big. So yeah, it, that doing size doesn't really work for me. I've just done it per meter and it works out right for the time it takes me. So that's what we do. We work, price it per meter and I'm probably way cheaper than other people would be as well. So do think though with the commercial you could probably price it higher and that's what people tend to do i think with commercial work and also i suppose it's like window cleanings when you go around you've got your pricing structure but if the job's going to take longer because there's problems with access then you're going to add that onto your price as well so ultimate clean is saying i've never had an issue with my gvs pamphlet matt from your cleaner windows got a similar white badge and he's got his pamphlet and he loves that as well the Atom, the Panther, and the other smaller ones that have come out since, they're all great. Having something bigger might be nicer at times, but other times something smaller would be nicer. If I ever get in a position where I could have a winner, but I went for me Industrial 85 and that's all I've got. Sometimes I think a small one would be better, just because you could keep it in the van all the time and take it out. Dawn Window Cleaning saying, how about putting your water-fed pole gear on a small boat and going across to a small island in West Cork to clean up for the day? You ask for unusual. Is that something you do? That sounds awesome to me. And also sound like a day job. <laughs> it's always good to do something unusual as well, isn't it? Sometimes because it's quirky, you're intrigued by it. So you really like to do it because you've never done something like that. And you want to know, is it possible? You'd have to let me know if that's gen... I think a lot of people would love to know that one. Sounds good to me. And being on a small island, they can't exactly run anywhere, can they? The Ultimate Clean saying, I love mixing my week up. Monday and Tuesdays, oh, you've done a render clean. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, window cleaning. And appointments on Saturday for a render clean. And you've done a roof scrape today on a Sunday. Well done. Love having a mix of work. It is great sometimes to break it all up and do something different. That's why I love a gutter day as well, because it's just a day of gutters. And uh, I find that quite handy. Some of the gutters can be challenging and it's great. When you, you gutter vac, you think, that's it. I ain't going to get that out. I'm going to have to do the old way with the ladder and up you go. And I love showing people afterwards what you got out as well. I always show them because I like them to see what I've got out of the gutters. Some people just aren't interested, don't care. But I always show them and then ask if they've got a compost heap, that sort of thing. It sounds like that must have been a quick week if it's very varied like that on different days. Matt, how you doing, mate? Trusted Cleans Limited said we quoted customer commercial gutter cleaning £500. Another quoted £8,000. And you lost it. That is unreal. What does everyone else think? Put that in the comments below. That's unheard of. 
That just seems crazy, doesn't it? They've also got a budget there to slash down there. And I bet as well you was bricking it at £500, because I know I would <laughs> that sort of money as well. That just seems insane. Maybe next year you'll get the shout, mate, when they've seen what they've done. They must have hired some big equipment. You probably explained with your poles you can reach. You don't need. Uh, Matt's just asking, did you mean commercial gutters or industrial gutters? Uh, when I lived in Ireland, R with the cross the boat, um, back in the UK now. Tough, true story. I bet that was awesome, though. What a story. What a good thing to say, though. And I bet in that pub, they're probably still talking about you now. That's why I think some of these jobs you do, they are quite fun, really, aren't they? A lot of people talk about it for a long time. Okay, Matt's just saying sometimes too cheap can be as bad as too expensive. Yeah, because I think some people think it's a con that way as well, don't they? It makes them question it. Too good to be true. Provided them with SOPs, risk assessments. Ah, okay. But that's a hell of a price difference though, isn't it? £500 and £8,000. That just seems crazy. Absolute crazy. I don't do risk assessments or anything like that. I don't have to by law because the people who work for me are all family members. Is it when you get to five employees, then you have to do a lot of the health and safety risk assessments and all that kind of stuff? I can't remember what it is, and if it's under, you don't. I think that might be why it's, it's like that, not because all family. But yeah, it's something I've been thinking about looking at doing anyway. As far as you've done a risk assessment, you can reuse that for something else, but obviously you change it for that situation. Uh, Matt, you've just won an industrial gutter job at £10 per metre. Good one, mate. So hopefully that's answered your question when you're asking how much people charge. I just do residential, but if I did commercial, I'd just charge the same. Unless it's really awkward or the gutters were done a bit funny for the, me poles to reach it with the goosenecks to get in there. But we charge £3 a metre for a residential gutter clear. And for the time it takes, we're happy with that. If it's lower down, it's a bit less. And if it's another level higher, we charge a bit more. It's nearly paid for your new vac. Nice one. Be able to use your new vac on that job as well, will you, Matt? Because Matt's got a panther and then he's looking at getting perhaps a bigger gutter vac. Don't know if you've seen on one of his videos where he did a gutter clear, maybe a bigger gutter vac, especially for that job, would be worth having because he knows he's got that job uh, annually. How do you guys approach complaints about damage to their properties? I've been cleaning a UPVC door with a cheap plastic lead effect on the glass. That is now peeling. I gave her a free clean. It's always a hard one. If I get a complaint, I always like to go around and have a look in person at the problem and speak to them in person as well. I haven't had many, but I did have one where it's a house and on the front they've got diamond shaped leaded stuck on the glass to give it that effect of a leaded window. On a couple of windows, there's two panes of glass, but on both windows, only one pane of glass got replaced. It was on the new panes of glass that had been replaced where the lead was starting to come away from the window. And the customer come out saying, what are you going to do about it? Because the guy who fitted me windows, when I rang him, said, don't tell me you've got a guy that cleans your windows with a pole. And he said, yeah. And he goes, it's because of that. So my customer come out and I was obviously trying to be a bit calm and I was a bit taken aback because I was saying, if that's the new pane and that's the one where the lead's coming off, the other pane to the right and the same window or both windows i said i've been cleaning that far longer than that one and the lead hasn't come off so it's got to be something to do with the new window that's been put in i also use a flocked brush so i got it out and i said it's designed to be used on leaded windows as well i'd be surprised if it's this but i obviously wasn't discounting it he was saying it's not your brush and i was saying maybe it could not even be the guy that fitted it it might be from the manufacturer manufacturing fault he will speak to them and it will get sorted but i also cleaned someone who's a window glazer and i spoke to him he was telling me about how you put it on and there's a boning needle and if you don't push that down enough the adhesive doesn't stick properly and if you get a little gap then it peels off but he also was saying that the window fitter you can fit it and he could do that on the glass himself but normally it, you get from manufacturer so it may be like i say back to that and then he was worried in case it was a window he made. <laughs> he wanted to know the address. My customer was happy. I've been called back once for scratches on a window. I was convinced it wasn't me, but I know I've used a wind scrape on there. So I said it could have been me because I have used this to get a load of paint marks off your glass. But in the end, they, they were fine about it, luckily. I was absolutely sweating bricks there and uh, thinking I've made that possibly it's me. So therefore, I'm going to have to replace it. 
you like to keep your customers happy and have a good reputation. Luckily, it was all sorted over and they sorted it out, polished it off. They could have been there before I cleaned. You never know, do you? It's hard, isn't it? You just got to look at it and try and think, have I caused that? And if you haven't, how to put a case forward? Hopefully, did the free clean go down well? And what I'll do is go and look in how could I probably replace or pass on someone that could repair that for her. Especially if you speak to someone who knows that field and they tell you this is common, it makes you feel a bit better as well. You always want to do your best to help your customers. Yeah, sorry, Matt's saying, should be here this week with your big gutter vac. Nice, but you can't wait. It's like Christmas presents, isn't it? She knew it was peeling. I naively thought she'd just peel it off eventually. <laughs> She's probably glad that you've got most of it off anyway. It saved her job, mate. Just talk to them and be yourself, isn't it? Uh, how does everyone advertise gutter clearing? Do you do leaflets, Facebook groups, etc.? I don't really advertise it anymore. I've got it all on my van. One day this week, I cleaned a customer and his neighbour. I did a quote for the month before, but the neighbour was out. I had a funny feeling if a neighbour sees me, they may ask, can you clean my windows? So I said to Matthew and Sophie, be prepared, because I know they'll be like, we're up for an early knockoff and they're making me do an extra job. If someone comes out because we did a quote, and wants us to clean, it makes sense to say yes because we clean the neighbour and then they'll both be on the same day. It was a bungalow, so it's not like a massive job. They just asked, can I clean the faces, softs and gutters above the garage? It was only a couple of metres, so I said, yeah. I did it for nothing because I was trying to work out why we hadn't picked up the accepted the quote. Anyway, it was a long story, but we got it sorted and he was happy. Doing that little bit for free because it was only a couple of metres. Ended up cleaning the neighbour's face, softs and gutters. I quoted it. The new customers face us obviously in gutters and someone that lives in the back of the house all come round because they didn't realise I did it, even though I've got it written on the van. They all impressed with what they saw. So I've got them quotes in and I've got those jobs. Also thinking of leaflets, I've got people's numbers, but some people don't like giving me m mobile numbers. So I tend to put a card through the door when I've been, tick on it, what service I've done. And I've got tick boxes for all the services I do as a kind of advertiser and that's won me some work when I've stuck the card through the door with what I've done and the price on it. You can put little adverts out in your local groups on Facebook for gutter clears during the season but a lot of it's just word of mouth for me. I mean, regular customers regularly have me once a year for example. Dawn window cleaning saying gutter clear on van leaflets, Facebook, Google and word of mouth it gets around but after every one I do, the price goes up. <laughs> we just play around with the prices, don't you, till you feel what's right for you. Everyone's different and everyone will say different prices. So just do what you think's right for you. The company should take some responsibility. The glass should withstand a gentle clean. Yeah, and that's what I'd show your customer, the brushes, and even be prepared to say, look, on the X line website, so use their kit to say, this is a flocked brush and it says it's for leaded windows so the fault must be something else leaded windows problematic did use leaded brushes do use leaded brushes flicked to be safe flocked sorry you mean mate yeah i just seen your comment flocked google spell window washes just saying thanks to adorn i do some lads windows this door is flimsy plastic template pretty sure she's fitted it herself it's like doing when you do face your soffits and gutters isn't it and you're cleaning the soffits but they're painted over and it's all flaky I hate doing quotes when I point them out because I tend to lower my price a bit. I tell them I can clean the soffits, but they're not going to look much better than what they are now. If there is some dirt, it will come off. But where it's flaking, it's exposing the wood. It's not going to look like brand new white. Plus, I don't want to be giving something a really good scrub when I know it could make things worse. That's why I always like to quote in person as well to see these sort of things. I haven't got it with me, but I've just got my leaflet. It's A5 size, went for a Vista print because the cost is cheaper and it's easier to put through letterboxes I found. And then, yeah, I've just put on there, like on the back is all my pavement methods and on the front is just saying, like, hi, we're visited today. And then I've got all my services on there with a little tick box and I tick what I've done. There's the amount and the date and I'll put through the door. Uh, window wash is saying I'm very fair, but sometimes you feel more about pricing. When you get a complaint, you just tread carefully because you don't want to harm your reputation. One bad word can cause a lot of damage, can't it? And then you do all that hard work just to get a little bit of good. But I think if you just be normal and try and meet each other in halfway, 
And you always know sometimes if your customer's got a complaint, their levels are going to be up here. So you, I tend to let them go on a bit and calm down. Eventually, everyone sees eye to eye, don't they? I sent a polite but direct message back explaining she knew it was peeling. I haven't heard anything since. It sounds like it's nothing unreasonable, is it really? And if someone did want to say something, you've just got to state all this and word will spread, won't it? Chances are anyone that's a troublemaker, everyone knows the truth anyway, don't they? I'm not saying she was, but I think some people just don't think, do they? You normally find a lot of these jobs when they're bodged. It's something they've done themselves. Again, that's why I like quoting in person. If you do notice something, always tell them. Like when I've done something, I will tell the customer, I've done this and this is what's happened. And then after the time, they laugh because it's, right, it's been like that for years. Honesty is the best policy, really. I've done things like plant pots. I can't think of the material they're made out of, but they're orange and you've got your pot and then it sits in the saucer. But a lot of people turn the pot upside down and use the small hole to put cigarettes through. So it's an ashtray and then the wind can't blow the stuff everywhere. I've broken one of them on a customer's house before because my hose is trailing around the house and it pulled on the bench it's sitting on it just toppled over and broke so i went around and told them but they just laughed said it's been there for ages not to worry about it i offered to buy new ones there's always something but honesty is the best policy and everyone knows well we're all human at the end of the day aren't we so that's what made me just think what is a typical day of a window cleaner i don't think there really is a typical day is there i'm gonna start and try and beat my first clean for eight o'clock you get things that go wrong with your van don't you like burst tires engines conking out I mean your kit's not working right and you're having to adjust or fiddle that and decide do I need to go home and fix this to carry on with my day or can I limp through a bit sometimes losing that time going home to fix it is going to be more chance of completing your day's work than keep twinkling with things all these kind of things there's always something that goes against you Dawn's saying tend to only want got to clean for my own customers now more profitable less hassle as I know the jobs yeah you know how quirky the place is or what to do on a Pacific corner that sort of thing uh, yeah I already know the prices you charge that's a fair comment that's like where I am although I do get some people who I don't do window cleaning for but they use me to clean the gutters for example because they've got a window cleaner but it doesn't do gutter clears and I, when they arrive I always tell them straight, look, don't worry, I'm not after taking on cleaning your windows. Use your window cleaner. I'm happy just to do the gutters. No problem at all. Try and reinsure them because I'm busy enough on the windows, to be honest. And that's a nice spot to be. I've always said, have slightly more work than what you can actually handle. So that if you get a skip or you lose something where you can't do a job that day, you've still hit the targets of the money you need. And obviously the weather is just the bloody weather sometimes. And it can't be helped. Now, like I said today, it's me turning kit round. Dawn's honesty, best policy, admit to broken things already. Sometimes you don't know if it was already broken or it was you, so you just say, it must be me. And you try and think how people think, don't you? When they know you're a nice person anyway, it's, it's no problem. It's good to have a good rapport with your customers. Like I said, we're all human. And sorry about today, I just cleaned my van. So I get all the inside emptied out, wash the inside out everything back in it i put the backpack on charge while i'm doing all that once the van's cleaned it's charged and i can it's you know it's topped up so it's fully charged i put that in the van we trolley the 45 liters out to charge overnight for tomorrow i wash the outside of the van I hoover the cab out in the front i stripped down my poles i've cleaned them and then what we did today as well as my gutter vac because i used that on friday we had a gutter day even though we suck the bucket of water through after each clean I still strip it all down, clean it. So I've cleaned the poles out because they start to feel a bit gritty in places. And I've used the pole care cleaner, sorry, that I use on my water-fed poles. I've done that on the outside of me carbon elite poles that I've got. It just makes them look like new again. It just helps with them all fit into each other. So I just give everything a touch up and clean up, put it back. The gutter vac's been cleaned inside and out. Everything's changed around, so it's all good to go. For the next gutter day i haven't got to think oh i've got a gutter day tomorrow i've got to get everything out and clean it it's a good way to strip down have a look at your kit check everything serviceable and then put it away it's done so that's another good thing i like about having a gutter day it's just a day of gutters and then on the weekend i give the whole thing a clean through and then it's just like the best i can get it to new again for next time and any other bits of kit that needs tinkering with your rinse bars are clean pull them through if i need to I like to be able to work Monday to Friday without fiddling with kit and having to repair things. If something happens on the day 
and I can repair it there and then obviously I will or I have to do it in the evening when I get back that's what I'll do but it's nice just to have the whole week to flow work bounce for all your jobs and the other thing that we don't really talk about with your typical day is when you finish so everyone's thinking oh, I'll finish at five or whatever and you get home but then that's that mad rush isn't it tea's going to be on the table everyone wants to eat and while that's going on I'm trying to race through the invoicing so that when we sit down and eat I can chill out but you don't really chill out in the evening do you even if you've got all the invoicing squared away before you eat because your messages have gone out you're going to get replies through the evening with those saying I'm coming round tomorrow any inquiries that are coming in as well any quotes you've got to go and sort out what time you turn up if you do them in person and chasing up payments last week I was working till 9 10 o'clock at night with problems with my website I was trying to do as well so there's all these little things you can't do when you're working you can only do in the evening people don't see it on a typical day it's great when you've got to be as opposed to constantly working all the time but that's all part of being a window cleaner isn't it or having your own business whatever it is that you do okay I haven't seen any more comments coming in but yeah is there any other questions people have got for like Q&A where people need help obviously don't ask for pricing because you probably won't make a lot of money if I told you my prices all the time but you do what you need to do I've seen different vans from different window cleaners in and around the areas I work it doesn't bother me I've got my customers and I know they're going to stick with me they're more than happy with me so I'm happy if you get, I'm not worried so I'm glad I started when I did that's what I was trying to say to Teresa I'm glad I did it when I did because imagine trying now with all these other fans it'd be a bit intimidating wouldn't it more and more people are starting their own businesses or losing jobs so they're trying to start their own thing going is it because as well all these new houses being built and other people thinking oh I'm going to do that or is it you know a natural turnaround you got people who are no longer window cleaning because they're retiring and you're always going to have people starting the window wash is saying thanks for the great chat guys it's been therapy <laughs> get a beer or something next time mate try and keep this informal and just a bit chatty i have a little loose idea in my head and just go with the flow a bit like me window cleaning do clean gutter vac after each clean as you don't know when you'll use it again and always use wd-40 when the poles have got stuck once you have to use a hacksaw I think we've been close to using a hacksaw, to be honest, mate. I always like to get me gutter vac cleaned through so it's like new. If I've been using it in the week, I'd definitely have it done over the weekend. If I had two gutter days in a week, no matter how late it is in the evening, I would be outside cleaning me gutter vac out so it's ready for the next gutter day. It's like being in the military, isn't it? Your, your kit, you get drummed into it. So how, no matter how cold, wet and tired you are, they come first. That's uh, just the way I am. And it's good when you clean all this stuff because you get it a bit of a health check as well, don't you? So another good thing that's happened, I've got enough money for the month now. I have ordered my pizza oven. I did save the money. If, I don't know if I told you last month, but that money had to be used because the month wasn't that good in terms of bringing in money. So I couldn't use the money for the pizza oven. But this month it's gone the opposite. So I've got more than enough. So I've ordered it. I'm waiting for that to come in. And then I'll be eating pizzas once a week for me and the family. I love making them. I've had a massive brain fart. My dad's always said, if you're a cleaner, you'd expect to have a clean van when you turn up to a job. I would love to finish early enough on a normal day, say by four o'clock, and then I would clean my van every day at the end of the day, give it a wash down so it's clean for the next day. It would be a bit pointless though around here because I'm in the countryside, the amount of mud on the road because the tractor's bombing up and down all the time. So even if I cleaned it, by the time I've done the second clean, it's really dirty again. GG too deadly says first clean double charge. Ah, oh, okay, mate. Yeah, sorry. Going back for this one. So for first cleans, double charge, double your normal price of a window clean. Uh, saying yes, yeah, always charge more for the first clean. Do a good job. Take your time. Makes it easy going forward, which is true. I don't charge double the price for a first clean. We charge a bit more on top. It depends how bad the windows are. Sometimes. We do the first clean for a customer, but it's not a first clean, if you get what I mean, because they've previously had a window cleaner, it just doesn't come around anymore. The windows were in good order before we picked it up. If it's something that's going to take a lot of time, you definitely need to be charging more than a normal clean. Some people do double. If you get the windows up to the standard you want, so then your next maintenance cleans is going to be easier. That's where you make your money back. 
it's nice to have that time available rather than charging too cheap you're then thinking you've got to go really fast and then you might not do as thorough a job as you want for the first clean if that makes sense so charge a bit more to take that time and your customers will be happy anyway they've probably been dying to have them windows clean for months and then to have it really clean i did say i would char charge double if i ever get burnt where people have used me for a first clean and then cancelled any other ongoing window cleaning but that hasn't happened to me yet have I had any serious injuries me no i have pulled me back three times in one year but that was just muscular my back locked up for about a week i couldn't really work and then another week i was just steady to try and recover fully i'm always lifting heavy kit in and out i tend to do the more awkward windows because my son's got twisted spine so i try and take some of the awkward windows off him it does face your and gutters and all that kind of stuff but i try and take up most of it and same with my daughter but yeah it's me backwards the biggest thing that's why i ended up buying myself some electric reels and a gut vac system that was a really good thing going forward I've not had any other serious injuries i've slipped out bang my knees that sort of thing when you stand on your hose it rolls it's very easy to come over so Try and slow down and look where you're putting your feet. Is anyone else any bad injuries through work? It's easy to have an accident. When you're thinking about your normal window cleaning today and you're trying to race because of time, if you're not fully aware of what's going on, you very easily could have an accident. So it's knowing when you can go fast and when you've got to hang on a minute and take your time a bit. Always have good situational awareness of what's going on around you. Has anyone been bitten by dogs? How frequently are the roots... And what's the customer base numbers? I've got different rounds in different areas. I'm more local than I used to be. I used to travel quite far. If you've watched the channel, I do a Coningsby day. I travel for an hour to get there. It's a hundred mile round trip, but that's only one day a month. I've kept them and it's a day's work. So, and we like a bit of a run out for the van. It's nice to be next to the old air base. The other stuff is round near home. We'd go round the different villages near me, bounce around quite a lot. And in Wisbeach, it's a big town. I've tried and divided it in areas to make me work compact in Wisbeach rather than zigzagging all over the whole town. Different days, different areas in Wisbeach, for example. I've got just under 600 regular customers who are either four or eight weekly cleans. And then I probably got about E to 50 customers who we mark as inactive on Squeegee. But they use me for odd jobs like annually. GG too deadly saying ladder slipped on green decking. Tough lesson learned. And I bet when that happened, you thought, oh, this might slip. But because we've done stuff, you know, where you're confident, you think I'll push it a bit. And if you're a bit pushed for time, you've probably not thought as well as you normally would. But you only do it once, don't you? Someone else fed off a ladder once. It was almost my life, but lucky. Does make you think twice, doesn't it? I fell off a ladder once, but it wasn't window cleaning. I was helping a mate doing something to houses renovating. I was on the ladder. It was only one section of a ladder, so it went stupidly high, but the bottom slipped out. I remember it coming down. It stood on the ladder as it was slipping down all the way till it got right near the bottom of the wall. It needed to come out flat. So I went through between the runs of the ladder, but then the ladder run is being pushed away from the wall against my shin. And as it come down, it just took the skin all the way down. I would have been crying, but mates laughing. I was laughing as well. I was just dancing around because my shins felt like they're on fire. Dawn window cleaning saying bad back, Achilles tendon all limped for a year, but it was done playing five side. Yeah, wish we warm up. And I pulled things like that when I was younger, and they do take a while to come round, don't they? But uh, as we get older, you've got to look after yourself, haven't you? Because you don't realise what you put yourself through day to day. The load you're putting on your shoulders, arms, back, neck. You're lifting stuff up and down and you're trying to be quick as well, aren't you? And then there'll come a time where your bodies just can't do it. So it's going to keep you fit for a while anyway. And you've got to look after yourself because you can't work. You don't get paid, do you? So it is important to look out for yourself. I'm not sure if uh, anyone's got any other comments or questions. And if not, I'll start thinking about drawing it to a close. It's been going just over an hour, but it's great to have everyone coming in. I'll just go back to the comments, see if anything else comes in. The other bit of the typical day in the evenings re for me is refilling the van. So it's all ready for the morning. I used to fill the van up in the mornings. So I got up early to fill up the van to make sure I started early. 
But when the cold weather started to come in, I was always then saying, oh, I'll fill the van in the evening because if it's really cold in the morning, I ain't got to worry about filling up my van. It's already full, ready to go. So I just go into a door and window cleaning. Doctor said, what do you expect playing football at your age? Nice bedside manners. Yeah, you would have thought they'd be glad someone was doing something to keep themselves active and fit as opposed to sitting on the couch all the time, wouldn't you? He's probably jealous, to be honest. Before you leave, thanks for the time. Ah, from Canada. Nice to know we've got people across the globe, mate. Cheers, buddy. You must be affected differently to the weather than what we are here. I suppose, obviously, it's either really hot or really cold. So what we moan about being cold is nothing compared to what you have to put up with. Winter tips will be good next time. Maybe I'll do that next week, see what other tips other people have got as well. It's getting that time of year, isn't it? It's not long until December, really, is it? Seemed to drag the first bit of the year. Now it's racing and they've already got Christmas stuff in the shops. Right, that's it for me. Thanks to everyone for joining in and Breezy Window Cleaning from Canada as well. Cheers, mate. Catch you on the next one. Be safe.